Okay, guys. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about comet assay. It's uh, it's a very important process actually, but I haven't found too much video about this. So, what is comet assay? In simple words, comet assay is an assay or a process in vitro to study DNA break, single stranded break or double stranded break. But we we can actually study those breaks whether we we can find there is any DNA break inside a cell or not by this process so it's a it's a electrophoresis technique it's a electrophoresis of so let me write electrophoresis it's an electrophoresis of single cell so it's kind of weird because we directly take a cell and we take a single cell and we study the electrophoresis of that single cell to find out is there any DNA breakage inside that cell or not? That's what it's all about. That's what comet assay is all about. So why it's called comet assay? Because uh, after this assay, after the electrophoresis is done, once we see that, uh, see our plates or electrophoresis devices where we put all those things with agarose, we've seen, uh, you're going to see that it looks something like that comet, like tail, the typical comet structure which begins with a large nucleus and going towards a small thinner tail so that comet tail is found that's why we call it a comet assay so let's begin with it what we do uh, there are certain stages and we are going to see the process first is that uh, we need to take the cell mixture so we take the cells and it mixed it with low melting agarose now it's very very important to choose low melting agarose because there are different types of agarose out there the normal agarose and low melting agarose the low melting agarose uh, can be melt at 37 degrees celsius temperature but general agarose is solid at 37 degrees celsius temperature so we need to take low melting agarose because we cannot raise that temperature more than 37 degrees celsius because it will ultimately kill the cell and it can itself denature the dna or degrade that dna so we take the low melting agarose we put the cell onto that low melting agarose the liquid agarose there after that what we do we just take that from there and we place it into a comb plate that is called the comb slide or comet slide right it's kind of uh, commercial that's why you can see the sign it's very much commercial you can find this uh, type of comet slide nowadays from different companies so we take this uh, comet slide and we immobilize all those cells in that comet slide there right or sometimes if it is not a comet slide if you're processing this generally in your lab you can take a simple common slide and that slide should have a groove inside or it should have a uh, it should have a very uh, region for adding all those you know agarose or simply you can add it into the slide very uh, carefully so that the agar uh, agarose is not spilled out so we put it there we immobilize those cells those those agarose is now placed into that comet plate and we let it to sit there for some time so that the agarose is you know solid now agarose becomes solidified after the solidification of agarose we know the cells we picked is now fixed in that slide after that what we'll do now we will just take those uh, a solution that's called the lysis solution we add those lysis solution because that lysis solution will break down the cell membrane and also it will release the dna from the histones because you know the ultimate idea is to find out the dna dna break is there any dna break present or not so how can you find the dna break we need to go inside the cell so we need to degrade the cell membrane we need to uh, you know unwrap the dna from the histone and for that we add this lysis solution there right so after lysis solution works completely fine we add you know alkali solution right now alkali what alkali does they unwinds the dna right and it also denatures the dna denaturation of dna means the complementary strands of the dna are separated from each other and they are uh, at the beginning they unwind, unwind first then the complementary strands separate from each other so that thing is achieved by adding alkali there so that thing is done once this process is done then what we'll do we just take uh, we just put that slide 
and we run the electrophoresis. What we do is very easy that we put the electrodes in, in two different directions and we attach it, it to an electric device and then we run the electrophoresis just like any other gel electrophoresis. After running the gel electrophoresis, we'll get certain band or pattern like this. That's what we're talking about. That's what looks like comets because it has a nucleus head. It has a small, very thin, long tail, thin and long tail. So that's the comet that they looks like comet. Now, why this comet like structure forms? Because, you know, those DNA are fixed into the acaros, right? But if there is any damage in the DNA, I mean damage means there is any break in the backbone of the DNA that's called the damage unwinding of the DNA denaturation of the DNA is not considered as damage because denaturation is something what we do here using alkali treatment but damage means if there is any breakage in the DNA backbone and if there is any damage like this DNA backbone uh, damage in that case those damaged DNA those those single damaged short small damaged DNA contents will be dragged by the uh, by, by, by the by the electric field towards the opposite direction because they are very tiny so they can easily dragged by those electric field and what we see now we see a, a path a very thin tail like structure because here what we find as a head as you can see here is filled with all the other dna that is placed there which are not damaged which are complete dna right but the damaged DNA are taken by the electric field towards the opposite direction from the head and they leave this very tiny, very, 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 you know, faded but long thin mark, right? That is called, that is, the structure is like comet and that's called the comet assay, right? Now, how can we visualize this, this, this path? We can visualize it by, you know, during this process, we add intercalating agent. Uh, in, in this DNA before running the gel electrophoresis. So once we add the intercalating agents, they placed they are just placed here because intercalating agents are placed uh, between two bases. So they are placed here, right? And once we put them in in fluorescence light, we can see the fluorescence coming out of them, and we can see beautiful structures like this. So that is called the comet, and that's the comet assay. And the longer and the darker we find the tail, it means the cell contains more and more bro broken DNA segments, right? And if it looks something like this, say, say this is one comet, this is another comet, or let's say this is another comet. In these three different comets, we can say this, the comet formed by this cell is having less DNA, less, less uh, DNA break. This has the maximum DNA break. That's why the comets start to form. The tail is due to the DNA breakage. The head is due to the complete set of DNA. So that's how comet assay is done. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.